In this lecture, I'd like to briefly talk about two types of important bonds that are found in organic chemistry. So let's begin. So here we have the nonpolar covalent bond, and here we have the polar covalent bond. Now notice right off the bat the similarity. Both guys, both bonds, are covalent bonds. And what that simply means is that there is a sharing of electrons. In other words, one atom donates an electron and a second atom also donates an electron. The difference lies in the polarity. And we'll see what that means in just a second. So let's begin with the nonpolar covalent bond. So let's suppose we have two atoms. So two atoms that are exactly the same, meaning they have the same amount of protons in the nucleus and the same amount of electrons. So here we have our picture where we have our nucleus one with, the, with uh, some amount of electrons and nucleus two with the same amount, or the same number of electrons. And each nucleus or each atom donates an electron. So one coming from this atom and the second coming from this atom. So let's look at Coulomb's law for a second. Coulomb's law gives us the force felt by two charges some distance apart. What it states is the following. If we have two charges, Q1 and Q2, if we multiply them together and multiply by the constant K and divide it by the distance between their center of charges squared, we get the force that each uh, charge feels due to the other charge. Remember, plus charges repel and plus and minus attract. So, notice what we have here. The charge in this nucleus is the same as the charge in this nucleus because we have the same amount of protons in those nuclei. And we both have one electrons, one electron here and one electron here, and they also have the same amount of charge. So that means that this nuclei will exert a force on this uh, electron and this force will be equal to the force that this nuclear, uh, nucleus exerts on this electron. So this electron will pull this or this proton will pull this electron with the same amount of force that this proton will pull on this electron. So there will be an equal distribution of charge. These electrons will be found equidistant between these two nuclei. The distance will be the same exact. And this only occurs when we have the same amount of uh, protons found in the nucleus. So for example, if we have an H and an H, both nuclei have one protons each. If we have an F and an F, both nuclei have nine protons each, and so on. Basically, when we have two of the same atoms, we're going to have a nonpolar covalent bond, as we have here and as we have here. Now notice we have a double bond here, but it doesn't change the, uh, the fact that this is a nonpolar covalent bond because we have an oxygen with some amount of protons and a second oxygen with the same amount of protons. Uh, now, another way to look at it is via electronegativity. Now, both atoms have the same amount of, elect of electronegativity, and that simply means they will attract electrons with the same affinity. And that basically means that our electrons will be found smack in the middle, they will be equidistant between our two atoms, and so we're going to have symmetry. In other words, if we take a line and cross it this way, this section will be symmetrical to this section. And that means we're going to have a nonpolar covalent bond. Now, let's look at polar covalent bonds. Polar co a covalent bond simply means there will be an unequal distribution of charge. And let's see why. Well, suppose we have an atom and a second atom that have different number of protons in their nuclei. Suppose we have a larger atom with a larger number of protons than this atom. And what that basically means, because of Coulomb law, because the charge will be greater 
for this for this nucleus than for this nucleus the force that these electrons feel due to this nucleus will be larger than due to this nucleus and so there will be an unequal sharing or an unequal distribution of electrons so there will be an unequal distribution of charge between these two atoms and that means we're going to have a polar covalent bond now another way of representing this is by the following depiction so because our electrons will be closer to the larger atom, we're going to develop a partial, not a full, but a partial negative charge. This simply means partial negative. Now there will be a partial positive charge because the electrons will be shifted this way. There will be a po partial positive charge on this smaller atom. Now, examples include HF, HO, HC, and many, many more examples. Basically, whenever you have two different atoms, such as here HF, we're going to have an unequal distribution of charge. Electrons are going to be closer to the larger atom because this F, for example, have, has nine protons while this H has only one proton. So our nucleus will pull these electrons stronger than the H. So our electrons will be closer this way. Now another way of representing this unequal distribution is by using this arrow. So we draw an arrow towards where our electrons are being pulled. And our electrons are being pulled towards the larger nucleus, so towards the F. And we draw kind of a plus sign on the end where there's a partial uh, positive charge. So the same thing goes for H and O. We're going to have an arrow this way, and we're going to have an arrow this way. Now, another way of looking at this is via electronegativity. The atom that has a larger electronegativity, it will pull or attract electrons more strongly. That means we're going to have, because this one is more electronegative than this atom, and this one is more electronegative than this, and this is more electronegative than this, we're going to have our arrow pointing in this direction, and we're going to have a polar covalent bond. So once again, to recap, nonpolar covalent and polar covalent are both covalent bonds, meaning there is a sharing of electrons. In one, however, there is an equal sharing. In the second one, there is an unequal sharing.